Hey, how's she going, boys? Mike here. Welcome back to Grampy's Workshop. Uh, I had a comment. I love getting comments, and I had a comment asking some questions about the cab on my tractor, how it's uh, built, how it's constructed, how it's fastened to the tractor. So what I thought I'd do is, uh, instead of trying to answer that question, like with an email or a memo or a, a response to the comment, I thought I'd just make a video about my cab and show how this Curtis cab is attached to my Massey Ferguson GC2300 and some of the uh, the, the features and uh, you know how it's built and whatnot uh, and how it's mounted on my tractor. So let's go have a look. Uh, this is a GC2300. It's a Curtis cab made for GC2300s. Uh, they had them for several different models, but this is the one for the GC. Now, as you can see here, we have uh, the front post that comes up and then it curves back. So it comes from the floor line and up and curves back. And that post just mounts right on the floor with a flange. Also, what came with this uh, uh, cab, I must say, was these floor extensions, this extension plate here. It came out, uh, it brought the floor out, would I check under here? Uh, I'm guessing about four inches. And then there was a, a rib that ran along the bottom of the floor back to here, and then it curled up around to follow the cut out of the wheel back to this back post. Now the doors are on uh, a piece here, and this steel is, I'm going to say it's one by two tubing. And that piece is about, I'm going to say that's vertical. If you were making this, that piece right here would be vertical, so that your door hinges on that. And they're suicide doors, they swing to the back. But then the back post, uh, this cab by the way goes in front of the ROPs. So the ROPs aren't incorporated within the cab at all, the ROPs stay outside the cab, but this front post then goes from the back and goes on an angle to the back of the uh, top of the cab. Uh, to go back here to this front rib, this is curved, it doesn't have to be curved, but it's curved because the windshield is curved, so it's, it fits good there. But that's curved, and it comes up to the top, and then there's just a straight run that picks up the door post and then goes back to the rear post. The rear post uh, was incorporated with a piece of sheet metal here, there's a bend in it right here, and that's connected to this rear post. And then there's another offset in here, it's hard to show that, but that's just a double offset right in there. And what that does is it allows a little recess uh, to put the back window in, right, so the back window fits in this recess. And that distance there is six, seven inches. That's seven inches with a one inch double offset. Makes an L bend in it there. Maybe see it better from inside the cab. So this piece here, which is bolted to the back post of the cab frame, comes over here seven inches. And then there's a one inch offset there. And then this uh, back window is just plastic. It's held in place with Velcro, and that Velcro goes along that edge. But this little piece of uh, sheet metal here adds a lot of stability to the cab from side to side. And when you see it from this side, you see that uh, this. It's, it's the same on, on both sides of the cab. This piece of sheet metal is cut to form over the fender, but it also has a bracket on it that uh, you'll see from out here, this bracket is added to the bottom of that, and that's about an inch and a half with a hole drilled in it, and that bolts to the, one of the bolts that holds the ROPs to the tractor. So that's the only one right there that holds the back of it. Uh, at, again, uh, these floor plates that add about three inches to the width of the tractor platform, the front post is bolted to that, and then there's this uh, rib that follows along that floor, and there's three bolts that hold that onto this uh, deck plate uh, expander, and that deck plate expander just bolts through existing holes that's in the deck of the tractor, and then it curls up, and then there's an added piece in here that's three inches. 
that just makes up the difference in the width of the uh, cab, the overall cab. All right, and the front of the cab has a cross member right here that goes across the full width of the cab. You see it out here, it comes down the front, there's kind of a cutaway there, and it goes right across the cab. And also, there's a piece of sheet metal that comes down this front leg, and it sort of flares out at the bottom, and there's one bolt that holds that to the expanded floor plate at the bottom, a couple of bolts that hold that in place, and then this cross member is bolted between the two front posts of the cab, and that gives the cab a lot of rigidity, so it's good and solid. Then this opening between this cross member and the actual tractor, that's just filled in with plastic uh, see-through or, well, mine is see-through at the top, but solid at the bottom. But the, the first one I had, you could see through at the bottom. That piece wore out on me, I had to replace it. The windshield pivots at the top, it's hinged at the top, so you can kick it out at the bottom. And uh, if truth be known, I leave mine out all the time, summer and winter. I don't have a heater in my cab. Uh, I never am pro troubled with the cold weather, except sometimes when I'm plowing in the winter, my toes will get cold. But having that uh, windshield open like that tends to help keep the windshield clear of frost, so you don't need any kind of uh, uh, fan or anything inside or defrost system to keep the windshield clear. And the wiper clears a good uh, visibility on it. And there's a wiper motor that's uh, integrated into the windshield. You'll see that from this side. The wiper motor here. And it has its own on-off switch. So uh, when I got this cab, that was the only electrical part to it. So I ended up uh, wiring that into the auxiliary circuit that shows up under the back fender of the tractor. There's an auxiliary plug there. So just tied into that. And in fact, I use that now for all the lighting on the tractor, for the work lights and everything. Uh, the, the top of it, it's a, a pretty good gauge steel and it's, uh, this isn't uh, powder coated. This is a good uh, enamel finish on the cab and the cab is a good size and it just bolts. There's a couple of, uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's something I didn't tell you. Uh, I, although I have this covered up with this uh, little headboard that I put in, there is a piece of steel that goes across the top here that curves down and picks up the top of the windshield and that's where the hinges from the windshield are mounted. And that's a cross member similar to what's down here below the windshield. And all I did just fancy it up a little, I put a headboard on it and put my few attachments. The headliner is also lined with foam and I find that makes a big difference because uh, if not the headliner because there's no real uh, bracing or support through the center of it, the headliner tends to uh, wobble sometimes and it makes a noise. But with that uh, foam on there, it cuts out that noise. The doors are just pin hinged on here, two pins each door. Uh, so it makes them easy to lift off. They just slide off this top part, pulls up out of the bottom part and the bottom part holds the pin. It's easy to put the doors on and off. And the doors are, if you can see that here in the video, they're slightly bowed out in the middle. And that's, the middle is where the latch is. And what happens then is when you close the door, it seals, and it seals nice and tight down there, so you don't have problems with the weather getting in. Although, uh, to be honest, uh, while having a tight door is nice to have, but there's lots of weather gets in anyways because the openings around the plastic cowling um, below the windshield and also there's some openings in the floor and under the seat that uh, we, we just I don't have them plugged or covered. You could cover them I suppose with hunks of foam but I never bothered. These back windows I replaced them with, uh, with uh, plexiglass I guess. Uh, they were plastic and they were getting scratched and marred and blurred and fogged up could hardly see out of them. So one day I had this brainiac idea because there's no movement in the cab per se, I replaced the parts of the house. I did that about three years ago, it works good. And they stay nice and clean and you can see out of them and uh, it works good. The other windows were held in with, uh, with uh, Velcro and I used to find
find that they would fall down sometimes, and especially when it was blowing snow, when the snow would blow in there. And that wasn't pleasant. So anyway, putting those in there as solid plexiglass made a big difference. Uh, it's a nice cab. I like it. There's lots of room in it. Uh, it's easy to get around. It's easy to see out of, except maybe when you're doing some motor work or plowing. With this new cowling I have in the front, it makes it difficult to see out there. But anyway, that's that as it made. The other thing is, this cross member right here oftentimes is right in your sight line when you're trying to load or run the bucket. But all you got to do is lean a little bit forward to get that. Uh, one of the things that probably is uh, an annoyance maybe to a lot of people is you have to open the door to get into the fill cap. Uh, so you have to take the can inside the cab when you're filling with fuel. Anyway, that's my cab. I've added some uh, creature comforts to it and some work comforts and I have a video about that so if you want to check that out I'll leave a link down below. Well there you go, I had a little tour of the uh, cab on my tractor. It's a Curtis cab for a 2007 Massey Ferguson GC2300. Curtis cabs make cabs for all different sorts of tractors and for different years too. If you go on their website, curtiscab.com I think it's called, uh, they have great uh, selection of cabs. And you can buy parts and pieces from them as well. So anyway, uh, I hope this video answered your question about the cabs uh, and how it's mounted and how it's fabricated. And, uh, you know, if you have any other questions about anything you saw in about the cab or more questions about the cab or more questions even about the tractor or anything that you see in my videos, leave them in the comments because I'll try to answer them as best I can. So anyways, in the meantime, uh, take your easy, take care. I hope everybody's having a great summer.